Okay, it's four o'clock. So finally, on behalf of IEEE MTTS Student Branch of Jadavpur University, Kolkata, I'd like to welcome you all to the webinar entitled Microwave Filter: Gateway of the Modern Communication System. The talk will be delivered by Dr. Shyam Chatterjee, who is Associate Professor in the Department of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering, Jadavpur University, Kolkata. So on this occasion, we have our advisor, Professor Bhaskar Gupta, who is also associated with the Department of ETC at Jadavpur Bhaskar Gupta, to introduce Dr. Shyam Chatterjee before the talk. Sir, please. Okay, thank you, Ardhendu. It's uh, truly a pleasure for me to introduce. Uh, uh, Shion. Shion is, uh, I think, by far one of the most favorite students of mine. He's not only a student, a colleague, and I take his help, academic or non-academic. So he is very close to my heart. And it's a really a very happy occasion for me to introduce him in this program. Uh, he actually uh, graduated in the electronics and communication stream. From Vidyashagar University. Arjendu, is it audible? I request all the participants to wait for a little bit of time because uh, probably there is a network issue uh, at the end of Professor Bhaskar Gupta. So I'm just waiting for him to join and uh, if the network uh, is uh, coming back, then he will be introducing so Professor uh, Shan Chatterjee, uh, else uh, we'll be introducing uh, our professor. So please wait for some time. Yeah. I am here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now you're audible, sir. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I can do. I. I am here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, so we can hear you sometimes, and sometimes the. I am talking. Am I not audible? Or then, am I? Uh, yes, sir. Now you are. Am audible. I audible? Or visible? Oh, okay. But I. Uh, yes, sir. You are audible now, and you are visible as well.
Or I request all the participants to. Arjun, though probably Sarah has left out again. Yes, sir. I again lost the network connection. I don't know why these issues are cropping up. Anyway, this time let me try to be brief. Uh, Shyam actually passed in two thousand three with gold medal. He graduated in ECE. He passed masters from Jaipur University in twenty five, two thousand five. and phd degree he got from the same university in 2015 he worked in samir from 2005 2009 and from there in 27 2007 he was sent as visiting Caltech, to work with Professor Engelajan, and from 2009 he is serving our department. Currently he is an associate professor there. Also he is. Uh, uh, oh, oh. Also he is. A member of the I Triple E and uh, I Triple E Special Interest Group on Human Humanitarian Technology, senior member. a senior member of IEEE and member of IEEE special interest group on humanitarian technology he got young achiever award 2018 from exploring advanced in engineering and startup coordinator of jadavpur university so he has published 30 journal papers and four book chapters i am sure you will learn a lot from his talk today over to him Oh, I request Professor. Oh, oh, before that, I'm just. Ah, uh, hello. Okay. Now it's over. Yeah. Okay. Now it's over to Dr. Shyam Chatterjee. Sir, please. Okay. So, okay. So, very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, it's been privilege to present a lecture in front of so many. Also, uh, to my. professors from whom i taught everything i learned everything i got the ideas and now also the collaborative project work are also going on with all of you so now i share my screen first okay okay uh, is it visible yes sir it's visible okay sir. okay so uh, actually the lecture topic is micro filters gateway of modern communication systems and if i tell a micro wave guy that what is a filter or a micro filter it means that it is basically a very common topic to all of you first of all the if i remove the word micro wave if i choose only the filters 
filters are actually taught from the second year onwards and basically the synthesis of filters and the circuit components and the topology are very familiar to everyone then go for the microwave filters that is another issue which is very well taught in undergraduate also and in the postgraduate also so and then if I say that topology based, then there are hundreds of topology and different different way outs. So if I include all of this, then probably the presentation will be no longer end within a one and a half an hour. So it is better to bring out some of the key points which I feel that for a filter designer should know. So my first part of the filter presentation belongs to the basics of the filter and some of the lump to distributed component parameters all of those things and after that we are basically focusing two main criteria of the filters or two main design topologies one is called parallel couple filter another is called hairpin line filter these two filters are very common but they have some inherent problems and our main criteria or main objective of this filter design is make the filter as much small as possible with wide harmonic suppression that is the most important thing which i believe that the modern filter design should concentrate on and if on that basis if i if someone says that well there are saw filter bow filter and there are other topologies are there yes there are so many different topologies are there but we are we know that those filters are very strong in the kind of design but we are taking a simple design so that we can use our techniques on those simple designs which are easily available and also which are easily fabricable so with this background Basically, what is a filter? We all know it's a basically a two port network and it contains a pass band and it contains a stop band and the pass band and stop band is basically in terms of frequencies and on that basis, we can say that the pass band and stop band can be varied if it can be a low pass filter, it can be a band pass filter. On that basis, this band nature is actually determined and the last point is very important it basically provides a linear phase response we all know that the phase linearity is the most important thing and on that basis we generally introduces a term which is very important for a filter measurement called group delay and that group delay term is very common because it's basically produce gives you the information about phase distortions so on that basis we all know that there are four types of filters generally one is a low pass filter high pass filter band pass filter and band stop filter and specially i am focusing on the band pass filter so that's why i make a central image where the band pass filter is introduced here and you can see the linearity of the phase it does not have any ripples or any kinds of nonlinear performances so with that highlighting factors what are the applications of the filters because if you are thinking that the filter topic is very age-old topics no it is still have a very important recognition still now first of all if you see WLAN transceiver it contains low pass filters it contains band pass filters and moreover that it contains multiple frequency based filters means it may have a filter of 2.4 gigahertz center frequency it may have a filter of 5 gigahertz center frequency and nowadays if you have remembered the first part what i have suggested that the size should be very small and a minimum space on which the filter should be mounted so it may happen that you need a single filter but that can be reconfigured for multiple frequencies then there are another example which is a heterodyne CW radar you can see 
there are bpf means band pass filters and low pass filters are there and the specifications of the, those filters are very stringent because all of the specifications which is a subsystem level specifications generated from the system levels throughput changes so ultimately if you have a overall system specifications you first simulate in a system view about the block level and then generate the specifications and on that specifications the design criteria sometimes get easier sometimes make become very difficult then another is a cellular phones digital cellular phones filters here you can see the filters are specifically saw filters which we are not concentrated now because we are basically focusing on the basics of the filters then this is a gps receiver where again some specific filters are mentioned you can see the particular special kind of cut off frequencies are required for different defined kinds of filters and the filters position means some of the filters positioned just at the front portion of the receiver and some of the cases they are very close to the if range so on that basis what are basically the filter characteristics you need a general first two lines are very common to every filter you need a very low insertion loss within a pass band because the loss is a very important criteria and as we have said already it is a two port device so any two port device and if it is a pass band device it does not have any attenuation then the characteristics of that filter should it should transmit whatever the signal ideally comes in the input ideally transmit to the output so the insertion loss should be very low return loss that means it should not reflect anything back to the ports so that means it should be very high return losses then as i have said already phase response should be linear that means the group delay is minimum and the beauty is that it does not have any it ideally says that it does not have any phase distortions then symmetrical pass band that is a very important criteria sometimes we have seen some filters that it contains a right especially in the band pass cases it contains a rising edge and it contains a falling edge and the rising edge and falling edge uh, slopes are not at all symmetric in those cases the problem comes when you have a very close image signals so if you have a image rejection filters your symmetry is very important high quality factor because nowadays we know fractional bandwidths are very important case so not a initially you are doing designing 10% maybe 8% but nowadays we are going for 2% 1% of bandwidth so means very narrow band response so at the same time scart characteristics is a very important means high roll off if you see from our general understanding that the filters are generally ideally should look like a pulse for a band pass filter or a unit step function for a low pass or high pass filter so ideally it should have 0 1 0 kind of response but the problem is that due to the characteristics functions it always have certain kinds of roll off so it does not have ideal 0 and 1 so always it contains certain kinds of transient response and that problem basically provides a scart characteristics so ideally whatever the filters we are designing a good filter should mimic the ideal response so it should have a very sharp characteristics then most important part is we are concentrating on the pass band but there are certain applications where your signal also can have in present in the harmonic sections and your filters contains certain higher harmonics with a easier response i can say or i can say it contains certain easy access of insertion transmission so in those cases it may happen that your filter passband is very good but it also contains certain high attenuations high uh, i can say harmonics 
and if that happens then maybe two or three very closely specific frequencies may pass from the pass band and also from the harmonics so these factors are very important when you are treating with the mixers because it contains two tone signals verifications and you know from the two tone signals considerations you have some image signals very close to the main signals which are basically generated or you can say, or you can say which are basically take care by the scart characteristics and symmetrical response and it contains certain response which are far away but very close to the 2f 3f regions on those cases it may happen that your main signal will also pass with the other signals so this is the most important factor in terms of harmonic suppressions and with all these factors now modern generation requirement is compact structure so you should have a filter which is a tip of your finger so with the basic idea about how to design or on what factors we should remember for designing a filter we are now going for the some of the basic theories of the filters which are basically very well known to everyone i think because it's the age old filter response we all know it is a two port device and as we have seen it is a main factor is transmission characteristics so generally the transmission characteristics somehow having a very low insertion loss in the pass band and very high insertion loss in the stop band so this is basically the characteristics so we know that means that the transmission loss or the insertion loss or the s21 characteristics should have two different domain of response one is we should concentrate what is the parametric relationship of the s21 with the design in the domain of insertion the transmission region and on the other hand what is the parametric design or the characteristics when there is attenuation so with that factor any filter characteristics can be defined in terms of the transmission characteristics where epsilon is the ripple constant as it is a general one we are not concentrating initially that it is only for chevy shape it may be butterworth so we are basically having a general equation and there is a normalized function this is an important factor initially when we are designing a filter we are not treating the filter exactly at the different frequencies because every time if you have to design your frequency filter with the particular specifications and then you have to design it from the scratch it will take some times so it is better to design the filter characteristics in a normalized mode and then do the transformation so that's why we use a fun function which is called characteristic function and that characteristic function also depends a capital omega which is basically the normalized frequency domain response so with that we are basically concentrated on the two factor one is called insertion loss factor which is straight away coming from the transmission characteristics and another is return loss factor so if i have a normalized function one if certain amount of signal is going from the uh, port 1 to port 2 in terms of trans s21 then how much it is reflected back and that means this lr should be very means return loss should be very high if you have a very good filter now in terms of the filter response we basically concentrated or we basically treating the filters very well known one is called butterworth and another is called chevy shape there are other filters like elliptical all pole all pass filters but from the time being we are concentrating on the butterworth and the chevy shape and we all know that the butterworth have a very flat response in the pass band and in the chevy shape it contains a ripple and the most important factor is that how the poles and zeros are organized we all know that the poles of a filter 
if it belongs to the left side of the sigma plane sigma j omega plot then we say the response is stable from the theory of the stability and we can see here that generally the poles of the butterworth filters lie in the left side of the real part of the sigma so it means that the poles have a very specific positions and there are no finite transmission zeros because you have seen that the response is very flat here but here one question will come that see this figure it contains a very flat response and if you have a chebyshev it contains certain kinds of ripple here and you see it contains certain kinds of poles positions so the question may ask or you can thought of that when we are plotting certain kind of filter response the response contains x axis frequency and the y axis the amplitude ratio then where these poles and zeros will located this is the basic theories that if i have a single unit i can say first order filter where basically you contains a r and c now you see we have sigma and plus j omega this is the our simple poles zero plane so you see this is my sigma plane previous figure it is basically a sigma j omega plane and the plot shows sigma j omega present figure it is a 3d figure it contains j omega response and sigma so the beauty of this images are or you can see images is you can see first of all j omega having a positive values here and j omega having a negative values here and at the center it contains in terms of sigma a negative value so it means the first order pole are in the negative plane of the sigma but when we are looking from this side it shows this plot to us that's why the projection is having only a image of pass band and then is just going down so is a low pass response but if you go much depth much higher depth in the plane of sigma maybe at minus omega then you will see a image like it will show first here then it rises then it goes down so ultimately it means what you are seeing the plane of the plot on this plane where db means the response and j omega are the plane whereas the other plane is basically the sigma versus response and that sigma goes on towards this direction so it means the same thing will happen if you have a fourth order filter see the first image here you can see the poles are placed like this like a circle unit circle for the stability and you can see here also they are placed on a unit circle and one of the pole goes down then the second one rises then the second one goes down the third one rises and this depiction of the high low regions they are far away from this zero so it means if you are seeing in this region you will just see only a simple transition from flat region to the lower region but moment you are going certain depth you will see there will be certain variations high low high low so it means that when you are looking for a particular domain of pole zero plot you have to plot it certain depth in the sigma plane and there is another interesting observations from the chebyshevs we all know that the chebyshevs contains a chebyshev functions and on that basis it contains an elliptical equations and 
the poles are on the ellipse not as previous circles and on that basis you can see now the poles are closer to the origin of the sigma so previously poles are at this region maybe at the at the minus 1 plane but now they are very close to within 0 to 0.5 minus 0.5 so that's why you can see from this black curves that certain amount of perturbations you can observe in the chebyshev projections that's why we all see these ripples the ripples are actually coming from the poles and the poles not as like butterworth they are very close to the source or the zero zero axis so that's why you will have certain projection effects from that poles so that means it is better way if you plot a any filter response in a 3d plane and you can have a clear idea that how the poles are moving closer to the origin or far away to the origin and again they are on a ellipse or on a circle and also you can see another interesting fact that from the previous figure the poles are far away so that's why these black lines are sharp here but moment it goes here the sharp lines are not as sharp they are slightly flatter whereas when you are going for chevy shape as these poles are coming closer to the zero zero so these sharp black lines are coming very close to the zero zero so that's why your response shows a bit steeper pass uh, roll off rather than butterworth now our next factor is we know basics of the filters now our next aim is to design a ladder network for filter we all know generally a filter designer in terms of filter designer that either cl kind of ladder network or lc kind of ladder network is basically useful for the filter design now if you have a cl or lc kind of filter designing other any either any of those ultimately you are treating with conductance or susceptance so the significance of this g's are from terms of this series inductor or capacitor sun capacitors we are representing these g's either in terms of inductance or in terms of capacitance with a special impedance factor and if i say the first figure that means the first element is capacitor type then basically you have a source resistance g0 or source conductance in terms of if you have a inductance or capacitance so ultimately the significance of this g0 and gn plus 1 are for normalized mapping you have to map your whole ladder network input impedance with this net source impedance and this part with the load impedance so that means if g1 is the shunt capacitances or series inductances means the first figure then g0 is defined as the source resistance or source conductance similarly gn if it is a shunt capacitance or series inductance which is the last element then the gn plus 1 will be either load resistance or load conductance so it means it is better to design the g values and those g values have a table and then you transfer the g's with exact l and c so the values of g's are determined by these expressions for a butterworth first element g0 we have said that either it is a impedance or a contact means resistance or conductance so normalized value we choose one similarly the last element normalized value we choose one and there are certain values in terms of our earlier expressions of insertion loss 
and return loss with the number of element which is basically determined by the order of the filter so if i say that i have a z01 and cut off frequency normalized at 1 and i have a 3 db value at cut off frequency then if i have first order then the g1 means only one element then if i have a two element two order second order then i have two elements like that i have a ladder network here one important thing we start our design from the low pass prototype filter because it is easier to do the low pass design later on we have certain scaling factors such that we can transfer our filters to the other domains other filter specifications this is another filter where the Chebyshev low pass filters and for the Chebyshev filters you have to add another parameters called passband ripple so you can see there are two tables one is passband ripple 0.1 and the previous one 0.01 and with that your g values will change so on that basis ultimately now we can come to the flow chart how to design any filter so you have a specifications so with that specification you first design low pass normalized prototype for that low pass normalized prototype you should think about the normalized conductance and your cutoff frequency also normalized to one then after that you find out what is the number of element this is an important factor because you have to given you have to you have only the specifications and on that specifications you can have a filter order and if your filter order is higher then your size of the filters also increased because your filter order directly have a relationship with the components so there comes our later research problems where though you have a large order but you need a compact so ultimately after the order is finalized now you design high pass band pass and band stop and also low pass of exact values means now you have a transformations and for that transformations there are two important transformations you have seen there are normalizations on frequencies and normalizations on impedance so what we are doing after the basic filter designs we have to scale the impedance with the actual impedance and we have to scale the frequencies with the actual frequencies then we can add certain kinds of transformation factors for a or different different topologies and then comes the distributed factors so up to the last up to the first one two three four five parts these are basically practically for the any kinds of filter design no need for distributed circuit so what are the transformations so you can see for a low pass prototype filter we have initially chosen that the conductance and susceptances are one and the cutoff frequencies are one so first of all is frequency mapping it is basically to map a low pass frequency domain to that in the exact frequency domain so previously maybe my frequency cutoff frequency is one but as per specification it is written that the cutoff frequency may be one 2.2 gigahertz so it means now my cutoff frequency has to be multiplied with the exact frequency then there is another part that is called impedance scaling what is an impedance scaling if you see the ladder network it may be CLCL type or it may be LCLC type or it may be hybrid type so if you have a ladder network and if you have physical values of LC and remember previously the LCs are in terms of normalized but after the actual frequency transformation you now have the idea of omega so your alc also need to be transformed in terms of omega so whatever the exact value of lc you have in the ladder network now 
you have to calculate the impedance of the circuit when you are looking from the input portion and that input signal input impedance has to match with the load impedance or the sorry source impedance similarly in the load impedance so now you have to scale your g0 it may be previously one but now you have to scale to the actual value in terms of some kind of scaling factor so this slide shows basically the scaling effects so previously you can see l now it contains a gamma not into l and the gamma not is basically obtained from the previous slides where gamma not is the scaling exact scaling values so you have now l you have c your g0 and gn plus 1 now converted to r and g so these are my impedances which are obtained due to the transformation and you have certain kinds of low pass transformation in terms of omega which is basically the exact frequency transformation now whenever you have obtained the frequency transformation now previous normalized but scaled value of l again transform with the frequency terms so first you have to transform your normalized g to exact value of l without frequency scaling then you have to convert that l with the frequency scaling so with those kind of scaling you will now obtain four times of transformation either prototype normalized low pass to exact low pass transformation prototype low, normalized low pass to the exact band pass to exact high pass and exact band stops so you can see previously you have g0 removed then g1 g2 g3 and every g1 g2 g3 either maybe a inductor or a capacitor but now after transformation as it is a low pass so in terms of this omega and omega c and gamma you will have certain scaling and after scaling you will see that inductor remains as an inductor so there are no inherent change in the impedance property other than that in the band pass we will see that there had a certain change in the impedance characteristics maybe it happens that the impedance nature of the inductor after scaling changes to the impedance nature of a capacitor so now you can see a scaled value if you put into a exact values it looks like this kind of values you can see now it contains a 50 ohm impedance input impedance 50 ohm load impedance and certain values of clc in terms of specifications and now you have exact practical low pass filter similar case what we have said just earlier that after the transformation this inductor impedance now behaves like a capacitor because you all know that the high pass filter will start from the inductor capacitor and then goes for inductor so ultimately now transformation shows a reverb option but still now they are containing only single components either c or l but when we are going for a band pass transformation due to the transfer characteristics transformations with the specifications we have either g changes to lc or a c changes to lc so now it means you have a combinations of l and c and the most striking features are every lc either in parallel or in series it contains a resonating condition so it may have a self re resonating conditions which is basically 1 by root over lc so band pass filter each of this lcs are like a resonator same options obtained when we are going for a band stop nature and this band stop and band pass they are containing this kind of lc combinations which are in future we will see difficult for actual demonstrations why now going for the actual cases of microwave term 
till now we are basically concentrated on the filters but now you are adding the micro f term you can add rf term also it is not important what whether it is a micro wave or it is an rf important is it is a distributed filter means till now whatever we have done is a ladder network and we all know ladder network means it's repeated so it contains a repetition property that's why we say every filters or it having a periodic nature and any kinds of periodic structures the best way to demonstrate is abcd matrix because the current directions should have a forward position traveling conditions that's why the basic property of the abcd can be useful here and you can see that the first figure where certain small small stubs are connected can be represented by a equivalent circuit where abcd matrix are used so we all now have the idea that basically a filter means a periodic structures where repeated nature can be obtained and we all again know that the periodic structures frequency dependence dispersion characteristics these are very important terms interrelated to each others now as you have obtained the lumped component of alc you can straight away solder it and you can have a filter but the problem is moment you are going for a high frequency operation we all know that the length of the structures are very comparable to the wavelength so now it happens that the structures having a certain wide length is very difficult to design in the rf domain so you need a distributed components where distributed components can be generated by several other ways maybe micro strips cpws so the first criteria or the first theories are how the distributed conversions are actually happens so ricard transformation is the very well known topology which shows that if you have a lump component you can straight away demonstrate that lump component in terms of certain kinds of distributed parameters what is that thing it is nothing but we all know that the open loop open line or a short circuited line in terms of the open circuited impedance and the short circuited impedance it contains a periodic nature and you have a zsc zoc which are impedance for open circuit and impedance for out short circuit if you choose the length of the line in a such a way that it should mimic the load impedance straight away to the source then you can use this idea for generations of some small small distributed components so what actually happens you can see from this figure you need a l we know l impedance is basically j omega l so if you have a lambda y 8 line and if you have a short circuited line as per the short circuited line graph the jdc can be tile plot and if you plot it you will have certain values of zero infinity zero infinity plots so you will have obtain certain input impedance which is basically very close to j omega l and you can say that okay a lambda by 8 short circuited line can be a by inductor so the distributed conversions will ultimately give you a matrix and why a lambda by 8 line because you can see that the j z0 tan beta l and the tan beta l ultimately gives you a expression j omega c l straight away comes j z0 that means z0 is omega n so similarly ultimately our objective is you can have a l straight away obtain from a line so ultimately the first level of distributions is over that means now you have using the ricard transformation you use your lump component to the distributed component but 
there are certain problem see we know the filter characteristics will looks like this it will start from zero maybe if it is a jelly shape one then it rises one then it falls ideally but if you go for the distributed type it will first go down and again it will have a periodic nature because whatever the design we are highlighting previously it contains a distributed line and the line are designed on the basis of lambda and the lambdas are obtained from the lambda c's means a single frequency so your design line is for single frequency but when you are using it for a filter of a distributed nature it contains multiple frequencies so for exact calculations of different different frequencies to pass you need different different lambdas to be added on a single transmission line but we are not doing that so that's why whatever your exact circuit theories are not exactly matching with the distributed theories and that's why ultimately the ricard transform using the ricard transformation you can see that the distributed factors have a very larger cutoff whereas lambda have certain lower values means uh, uh, steady variations and also the distributed patterns contains periodicity because every quarter the f is basically returned because you have seen a circular plot so now what will happen ultimately if you have a periodic signals or periodic functions then your lambdas will repeat it and that's why ultimately you will have every certain specs you will have some repetitions then there are another problem the problem is from the previous figure we have seen that if i have to map a lcl filter i have some series stops some shunt stops but if you see carefully shunt stops are easier to design rather than series stops we will see later but at the same time there is another identity is called kuroda identities it basically tells you that the transformations of one kind of circuit to the another kind of circuit what that means basically there are two factors to come if you see in the filter design these lines are basically a lambda by 8 short circuited line or lambda by 8 open circuited line but if you have to connect these two dots you need certain lines here also so that it means certain transmission lines you are adding so the question will automatically come that if i add an added transmission line is that extra transmission line affecting my filter response second is there any way out where we can transform our series stops to the shunt stops and sometimes it happens that characteristic impedance matching is not very feasible when there are multiple types of stops if you have a identical types of stops then it is easier so with that basis kuroda identity said that if you have by any chance a transmission line added with a l then again you connect another transmission line first is this added transmission line will does not have any effect on your filter response second if you add an inductor here you can now transform this whole effect like a open circuit capacitor and a transmission line similarly the same thing can happen in terms of port 1 port 2 symmetric case you have a l then a transmission line now you can transfer it first transmission line then a capacitor so moment you have a lcl type of network using ricard transformation you will obtain this kind of structure 2l 
they are very close to each other and one C and you can see these two L's are very close to each other. So it may happen that if you design a open circuit transmission line, these two lines are very close to each other and your circuit had have one transmission line in this direction and two transmission line in this direction. So it contains sufficient space. Whereas if I use the whole transformation by this where this first level of transmission line and L transferred to a C and the last level of transmission line and L transferred to another C, then you have three parallel C's and they are easy to determine and that will contain one periodic structures what we have already shown in our earlier slides. So ultimately you have certain advantages here. But still there are certain problems. Whenever the Kuroda identities are mentioned, they are telling you that when you have an L or C, you can transfer that C to L or L to C. But if you have a LC network or a CL network, means certain kinds of transmission resonator, then the difficulty come that your Kuroda identities will not support. So in that case, you need again a transformer. What is the main objective of the transformer? The main objective of the transformer is if you have a series LC network, transform it into a parallel LC network. If you have a parallel LC network, transform it into a series LC network. So ultimately, it is nothing but a quarter wave transformer, which is having a special characteristics. And if you have certain kind of Z here, using the K transformer, you will have a opposite kind of Z. Similarly, if you have a particular kind of Y of maybe of LC series network, if you have a J kind of inverter, you will have in Y, J kind of different impedance. So it means ultimately it gives you an advantage for the band pass prototype. So if you have a designing a low pass filter, you can straight away go for the Kuroda. But if you are going for a band pass, it is advisable to either go for K inverter or a J inverter. So what is a K inverter or J inverter? It is either a inductance realization of emittance or a capacitance emittance or a distributed network emittance. So with that basis, what is basically doing here? You need a C to be connected somewhere. So you can have a K inverter and an L. So ultimately this L and the K inverter transform this effect to a C. Similarly, if you need a L, your J and C transformed it to a L. So ultimately, again, it shows you either you have a, maybe you have an impedance, you have a quarter wave transformer and exact impedance you can obtain with the opposite phase. So ultimately, it means what you are obtaining here Whatever we have seen earlier, a LC-LC network or a series LC parallel LC kind of network for a band pass, now converted to a K inverter, then series LC, K inverter, L series LC, like that, or J inverter, parallel LC, and goes on. So with those basics of the filter, now we are going for the planar topologies. What are the planar topologies? We all know Microstrip line bandpass filters are very easier domain of designing of any filters and there are certain very attractive domains of designs like N couple lines where coupling basically provides you additional capacitances. There are certain parallel couple filters, interdigital, hairpin, comb line and the objectives are you have to have sharp roll off you have to have certain small size. So these are always in our mind. So the most important factor we all know for any couple line designs are even more design and odd mode. Ca and the capacitances are always associated with the even mode and odd mode because it gives you the modal effects. And the modal effects are very important when we are going for our 
harmonic distortions because these modes are the primary criteria to generate the harmonics. So, for a microstrip bandpass filters, the most advantageous are we all know they are easy to integrate and planar structures, lightweight, but they have certain problems. First of all, as per the microstrip lines, their power handling capabilities very much depends upon the dielectric losses. And that's why sometimes we are changing our dielectrics FR4 to arteriodoid and maybe others. Then certain kinds of cases, isolations is very important because they are open structures. As there are dielectrics, so losses are there. So dielectric losses are always important factors. So with that, we all know the parallel coupled lines, the most attractive ones. And you can see for each of these lines, there are lambda by four sections and you have one transmission lines connected among them using certain kinds of even mode and odd mode capacitance. And they have certain equivalent circuits which are determined certain J inverters. So you have transmission line and then a J inverter, again a transmission line. But the problem of these parallel couple lines are you cannot have bandwidth or the percentage of bandwidth better than this 8, 6%, 7% like that. So it, if you have a design of 20%, it is better. You can have use this. But if you have to design a 2%, you cannot use these parallel couple lines. Plus, you can see it has a kind of structures. So it's taking Y dimension and X dimensions. So your size are matters. So ultimately, there are certain unequal phase velocities due to this even and odd mode inhomogeneous microwave structures. And that provides you a passband asymmetry. Sometimes we have seen passband asymmetries are obtained. You can have certain degradation in SCART characteristics and harmonics are always generated. You will see later. So now when you are designing a filter, somebody is giving you a specification. You have to be in careful. You have to have a design very compact. So it means your size of the filter is very small. So inherently, you are adding extra coupling capacitors that may provide you a bad options of harmonics. So your harmonic rejections can happen are very difficult options. Then sharp roll up. You have to have very careful because you are going for ideal filters. Some of the applications told you that you need a 2F, 3F, 4F, 5F means wide harmonics no harmonics, only a pulse. Then somebody may give you that filter that your roll off is such that the image rejection filters can only be useful there. You have dispersions due to the dielectrics and all you are doing, ultimately you have generated a filter specifications, maybe a 0 0.02 mm gap and ultimately your fabricator tells you that this amount of gap cannot be obtained. So your design has to be again remodified. So first our objective is some of the ideas how the parallel couple line filters size reductions has been obtained by the researchers. See, we have already seen the standard parallel couple lines. These are standard ladder type parallel couple lines filters. But it contains certain X and Y dimensions. So that's why we are moving certain compact di dimensions. See, the dimensions are such that it is basically overlapping to each other. But the problem you can see here, maybe the passband is very good, but it contains certain higher harmonics. And those harmonics are generally ignored in large number of papers. Another kinds of structures where foldings of each lines are actually done using certain meandering options. So ultimately you have certain reduction in the dimensions. But see in this result of this paper, they don't address anything about the harmonics. So we don't know what will happen in the harmonics due to these modifications. 
This is another which is basically the spiral. You can see this is one spiral. Then that spiral connected with another spiral and that spiral connected to the third one. See the effects. Asymmetric pass band. What we have already mentioned and if it happens that your input especially we have seen that this side roll off may be very easily designed by the filter specifications but very difficult this side because this side had an, have certain problems due to the parasitics and low frequency effects are basically hampers the asymmetry or provides the asymmetry in the pass bands. Then there is another interesting factor which is called folding. Folding means the parallel couple lines are coming here then suddenly not producing lines here but it folded to this and now if you see on that variations there are two different options. One is called over coupled. Over coupled is this one where this resonator and the last resonator overlaps in this region and insufficiently coupled they are widely spaced. So with that you have certain kind of coupling efficiencies that ultimately affects your passband response. We will concentrate later on these structures but in a modified manner. So ultimately what we have observed it observed that folding is a good option. You can have a compact nature, but performance degradation is not at all maintained or we cannot have the performance degradation, especially harmonics. Many of the papers you can see the compactness, but the harmonic suppressions are not addressed. So if you see in the other way, there are harmonic suppressions but the compactness are not addressed. So first we need to know why the harmonics are generated. The main reason of the microstrip couple lines are this odd mode and even mode. We know they are basically air dielectric substrate and you have a magnetic wall and electric wall among between them and due to the dispersion characteristics and as there are certain dielectric mediums are there and the fringing fields are there, you have odd modes and even modes and the phase constants for the odd mode and even modes are different. We have seen and also it is noted that the odd mode propagates faster than even mode and this is the main reason of generations of harmonics. Odd mode gener propagates faster, even mode propagates slower. So overall when you are taking a single value they are having a mode mismatch and that mode mismatch phase velocity mismatch provides you harmonics. So what is the objective to match the harmonics? By any way you have to balance these two modes. So either way is you add some periodic patterns or you add some perturbations to make the equalizations of the phases. So I have made two different portions. Either you add certain patterns in the ground plane so that you have certain periodic natures. Otherwise, you add some perturbations. So, either you add certain, you can see here, ground plane contains certain periodic perturbations, periodic patterns, and that patterns ultimately provides you a phase balance. That's why you can see at least the dotted line reduced here and you can have a very good 2F, only 2F you can see here, means the first harmonics, you can, second harmonics can be re removed. Again, a carpet kind of PVG placed here, where you can ha have certain kinds of harmonic suppressions. These are ground plane pattern. Other ways are, if you introduce the top plane perturbations, where the perturbations are placed in this region, not this region, because these are my even modes portions and these are my odd mode regions. So odd mode velocities are moving faster. So I need 
balance in the odd mode regions so you can see the perturbations are placed in these regions and we will see later how the patterns are also changing in the odd mode and even modes these are another wiggly line specs where you can have certain filter where harmonic rejections are re obtained this is another where corrugations are introduced and you can see it at least contains 5.2 f not so it's a wide frequency and why it's a wide frequency we will see later but i can highlight here one point see here the pattern corrugations are match one by one again here corrugations are match but slightly placed slightly right shifted this is again matched again it is slightly right shifted so you see in these two regions that lower corrugations and the upper corrugations are not one to one they are right shifted so they gives you certain periodic suppressions in the odd values and the first ones which are one to one mapping gives you periodic suppressions of the even values so with this there are another interesting factor called over coupled lines the over coupled lines are the over coupled lines are you can say that the if i give my perturbation extra than lambda by 4 you know that the lines are lambda by 4 length long so one lambda by 4 line of this section should be with another lambda by 4 line but if i having this effect changes with lambda by 6 or lambda by 8 line so that means the initial lambda by 4 lines no longer valid in those regions you have an additional values so these are over coupled so with this effects we are having certain designs we have used first this parallel coupled lines but using koch fractals because you know fractals will reduce your size and it contains the initial characteristics of the frequencies but the problem remains same that it elongates in these directions so you don't have any compactness so now most of the filters we have what we have seen either they address the coupling or they address the other ways harmonics so we have chosen two frequencies two filter specifications first one is at the 5.25 gigahertz and 20% bandwidth of the order of 3 and the second one is 2.5 gigahertz with again the same specifications so again we are designing on fr4 having a 4.4 sub dielectric constant and using the folding see the folding this is the actual filter using the previous specifications now we fold it so what will actually happens this portions mirrored and make it in this direction and you have certain extra gap so extra capacitance you are adding and that provides an interesting factors which we will see later so basically this is the plot you can see folding provides are almost identical nature with a better sharper roll off but again the degradation in the harmonics so what is the process of folding this is the unit cell folding you removed it in the upper portion and the equivalent circuit of the folding is just like you have certain j inverter in this portion so you have 01 means 01 and 12 these are already two inverters and you have a 02 inverters so this is 02 inverters 0 and 2 by this coupling gap so this is basically another topology what we have introduced called inline filter here you can see you have starting from here but now the gaps come in the lower region so you have added three gaps at least 
maybe you have certain length in the x direction but i have reduction in the y direction so either in the folded dimensions where you have gap in the upper or you have gap in the lower you have inline configurations again you can have comparison you can see folded inline and conventional both folded and inline gives you better roll of rigid characteristics than the conventional but again there are certain problems in the harmonics so we have to reduce the harmonics so these are basically the third order inline equivalent circuits what we have used and as there are certain gap created here so we have to very careful about this gap so this gap introduces an extra capacitances and that capacitances is basically very important for our transmission zeros properties this is the harmonic suppression characteristics what we have already said what are the property we are basically treating the s21 property so s21 if you plot separately for the attenuation pole and the transmission zeros we know the transmission zero characteristics in the harmonic should be zero and this attenuation pole characteristics of s21 should be zero in this region so you can see the red dotted region the p should be zero in this two region and the transmission zeros are here qs so either you treated with p or treated with q so ultimately for second harmonics to be suppressed the ideal condition is that the design should have p is equals to q is equals to 0 this is called transmission zero reallocation so it means what there are harmonics you have to reallocate your transmission zero so that there should be transmission zero at the harmonics so with that what we are doing we are adding certain periodicities here in the folded figures and now you can see how the frequency 2f not is shifted using the orders and here you can see the beauty of the odd mode and even mode the frequencies with the odd mode are very slow in movement so they are having very less variations whereas even more odd modes are very faster movement operations so they have very important distinct variations and they are moving closer to each other so ultimately we are having n is equals to 4 so if i have n is equals to 4 the pink line it sharp start starting here then it contains a fpo almost here and then goes here so my fpe and fpo are now very close to each other so my phase balance modal phase velocity balance are actually obtained so you can use a uh, this kind of structures you can use coach fractals where at least first order maybe second order can be used and you can see in every cases we are achieving certain kind of size reduction so these are certain fabricated results what i am showing here you can see moreover than this passband region it contains a very good result in the harmonics the blue are where there are no indentation and more indentations you will having a better harmonic suppressions so this is another structures where periodic tri tri triangular corrugations are used and again you can see the odd mode velocities and even mode velocities in changing effects and how the effects of transmission zero re reallocations are actually happened here so these are the fabricated results you can see in the harmonics region pass bands remains almost same this is an inline effect where you can having very good harmonic rejections in this region and a half circle or we can say quarter elliptical groups the idea is that remove that sharp periodic structures what we have already used here better if you have a very smooth curve so that's why we are changing our design with this quarter elliptic groups with the different different dimensions and you can see fold in folded structures there are three different designs one having certain heights 
one sudden tick and this is very small so you can see the comparative results very improve good improvement in the harmonics these harmonics are basically without any indentations and the harmonics are very good rejections with a very sharp roll ups this is another design where asymmetric perturbations are used for weak coupling and strong coupling and this asymmetric perturbations are basically again certain kinds of unit step perturbations what we have introduced over our single line and when we use it for individual characteristics for a unit cell we have seen with modulation we can say that the frequency positioning actually the transmission zero reallocations happens and this wmf is called we termed as width modulation factor where width of this indentations are actually modulated with that we again design the inline structure with a very good harmonic suppressions and a uh, folded structures where we have certain advantages of the very good harmonic suppressions so we can say these are a better result than the previous one because you can see 40 dbs are already achieved then coach fractals are already what we have already said earlier so with that we have made a comparative study where you can see previous attempts of size reduction addressed where you can see a very good size reduction characteristics are obtained but whatever not obtained previously is the harmonic suppression characteristics values now we have already obtained this harmonic suppression same effects are already seen for a different frequency where we have choose 2.5 and the fractional bandwidth now more stringent 10% same specifications here we are using another different structure called minkowski's factor where the minkowski operators are used to generate the pulse functions to a uh, extra added figures of the filters it is a folded filter this is a first part this is iteration 2 the design of this iteration 2 is very difficult to make because the design should have a very good accuracy and these are the minkowski generator l1 l2 w1 w2 in terms of a b c d e f g h parameters so these are fabricated prototypes and with that fabricated prototypes you can see the interesting factors is for the iteration 1 you have a very good harmonic suppressions and still you have a symmetry but for the iteration 2 your asymmetry your passband having certain kinds of asymmetry but the region of this portion having a very wide nature of harmonic suppressions then as we have already mentioned that till now we are already concentrated on 2f but what will happen when we have 2f 3f 4f so that's why the multi spurious are basically if you have a ideal quarter wave length cell of transmission line it inherent transmission zeros are allocated at 2m f not where they have a coupling length of 180 degree so if you have a line length of lambda by 6 at f not then it exhibits a transmission zero at 3m f f not so it means moment you are going for lambda by 4 it will give you or even orders of transmission zero allocations and moment you are going for lambda by 6 variations you will having odd order of transmission zero allocations so ultimately what will happen it means that your odd harmonics are unaffected according to the distribution characteristics of quarter wave line if you have a quarter wave line so last line is basically gives you the exact expression so if you have a corrugations of six numbers and if you have four periods to be matched from that six numbers so that 4 by 6 into lambda by 4 will gives you lambda by 6 so that is why the earlier figure shows you that exact one to one corrugations should not be matched for a lambda by 6 so it means what this is your lambda by 4 so if you lambda by 4 exactly matched one by one you will have 2f 4f so even numbers of transmission zeros if you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 so these six numbers of corrugations 
among that six numbers if you match only four numbers and left these two so you will have lambda by six number of effects in that regions so ultimately you have three f variations so you can see now if you have exact match you will have 2 gig 2.5 means 5 gigahertz and then the fourth value means 10 so your 2f and 4f's are basically reallocated here and if you have this kind of structure you will have 7 point something means 3f reallocation is possible so with that if you have this kind of structures it gives you lambda by 4 even number of reallocations it will straight away give you certain variations in both lambda by in both uh, 2f and 3f and what we observe this are fabricated structure and what we observe you see here you will have 2f you have 3f you have 4f so both 2f 3f and 4f so all of them are basically now down under the values so that's basically the wide harmonic suppressions so with those effects of parallel couple lines what we observe that our idea of harmonic suppressions can be very easily useful but you cannot have a very good fractional bandwidth so that's why you have to move a better design that is why we are moving for hairpin line and i am skipping this hairpin lines filters design very fast because these are very traditional hairpin line design and we all know our hairpin line design looks like this but our aim is compactness and harmonic suppression both so what we are basically doing we are again taking a specification 2.5 gig now fractional bandwidth 8 percent with a order of three and same filter specifications same material specification so it means we are not taking into account about the loss because the dielectric constant 4.4 and loss tangent is 0 0.02 so this is our basic harmonic uh, hairpin line filters we all know it contains a hairpin one u direction and then reverse direction and these are certain couplings and these couplings are hybrid couplings and we have seen here you can see first the fractional bandwidth is very good it has very high sharp roll up but the problem is you have a high harmonics so you have to need both of them so what we are doing first we fold it first order and then again fold it to the second order so what will happen it will happen the reduction in size so ultimately you have a f naught and the 2f naught so the first part that is the compactness is achieved but the harmonic suppression is not achieved so in a compact unit cell design if you see carefully it is very easy to synthesize the structures with a lc network so with this you can have a th third order filter one u second u and another u and this design provides you a better compactness at least in the y direction but it contains a very very good performance it in the region of the pass band but again the problem in the stop band plus there is an added effect previous stop band frequencies is this now this stop band frequency shifted due to the line length changes so ultimately you have to again reallocate or redesign we can say retuning the whole pass band frequencies and stop band frequencies so first objective is harmonic suppression we know that our main problem of this phase velocity mismatch happens in the coupling region and the maximum coupling region is this region so we introduce periodicity corrugations here and that provides you a very good effects in the perturbation in the harmonics and you can see again the odd mode changes very rapidly whereas even mode almost remains same close to each other so ultimately the second harmonic attenuation level is degraded and th that is basically our aim so you can see using the minkowski perturbation we have used a filter and it provides a very good performance at least for a wide band and you can have a certain depth of harmonic rejections then 
we introduce another effect called spar line those who are designing a filter or in a domain of filter they have a very common thing called spar line and that spar line is very in, in interesting factor where you can use certain extra additional transmission line gap created here so that it provides you an extra effects in the terms of resonator and that provides you an added effect of size reduction plus the harmonic suppression you can see the level of harmonic suppression here we are concentrating only for 2f not but it will inherently provides you a very good harmonic suppression up to 3f not and if you are going for a multiple designs maybe a uh, uh, bendal line or maybe a uh, uh, what i can say a taper line it will provides you a better options of multiple frequency rejections so with this basically we are having a very good advantageous portions of harmonic suppression in the hair bin line also but still our another objectives was not maintained the, also not highlighted here that is reduction of fractional bandwidth so that's why people are now going for open loop resonator and we know that the hair bin line filters they had in have, having certain kinds of problem of this bandwidth rejection second still the size is matter is doing some certain problem at least you are reducing size in the y direction but you are not reducing size in the x direction so if you have certain designs where these two in the top and these two are in the bottom at least you have certain squeezed in the dimensions so that's why open loop filter designs or the cross coupled filter designs nowadays are very much attractive designs it will provides you a better symmetry it are, it will provides you a better scart characteristics so i am highlighting only one cross coupled design which are basically very well known cross coupled design where you can see the resonator 1 and resonator 4 they are not looking each other like they are having a, uh, a angry discussions so that's why they are looking other way and resonator 2 and resonator 3 are they are loving each other so they are very close to they are looking to each other so that means that for a good resonator for open loop resonator this resonator one the top level resonator should look out way whatever the dimensions whatever the perturbations you need to incur they should be outer way and resonator 2 and 3 they should be inner way we i am not giving any data on this compactness or in the harmonic suppression because we are starting our design on this cross coupled bandpass filter where maybe perturbation maybe ground level ground plane perturbations or maybe incorporations of some spar lines will provides certain good things in the cross coupled so this is a upcoming research i can tell that how to introduce a cross coupled or how to introduce anything to improve the perturbations in the cross coupled to having a very good harmonic suppression second what are the basic properties by which you can at least change the this cross coupled behavior in such a way that introducing certain ar holes in the resonator that provides an extra effects which certainly we have used in siw kind of filter so with this i think now i can conclude my lecture these are certain references those who starts with the filter design at least he can initiate with the with those references and very common books are uh, one is poser then one is hall and lancaster that is very good also so i think i can stop here thank you sir
uh yeah thank you so much sir for such a nice and illuminating talk so uh, participants have got very nice interest on this topic and uh, they have posted a number of questions uh, on related things so sir i'll be reading the questions one by one and you please address those okay uh yes sir so should i continue sir yes yes okay sir the first question is if i want to design a siw bandpass filter with yeah. center frequency of 4 gigahertz hmm. then initially while designing the siw what should be the siw gigahertz so basically the filter have a different characteristics specifications and your siw is basically a different medium so when we are designing any kind of filter maybe in the parallel coupled line in the micro strip domain we are not concentrating about the maybe the because we so quasi transmission line are basically provides you almost tea mode of propagation so it means we are not concentrating about the propagating mode when the guided medium maybe in the wave guide or in the there are design of guidance to be overcome means whether it have a 8 to 12 gigahertz band first you design a wave guide or if you have a siw first you design on a perfect propagation mode it means if you see carefully about the siw mode is t10 mode so first you design your siw in terms of t10 mode as per the t10 mode not on the terms of filter then you design filter on that because if your filter specification is lower than the overall siw design then what will happen the filter overcomes or such not the filter characteristics itself hmm. okay sir okay thank you uh, the analytical and technical logic to implement the multi wide band pass filter using quad crop uh can you repeat the question again okay sir uh, what are the best analytical and technical logic to okay. implement the multi wide band pass filter using quad cross strap stepped impedance resonator okay okay uh first of all if you are designing for a multi wide band or multi band frequency you have seen that uh, actually i have removed the slides here i have not included that i just shown you one presentation slide that will be easier for you to generate uh, to see okay just one second what's mm. happened yes you can see this is another uh, interesting topic which i have removed here not taking in the factor that is multi band filter or dual band filter where basically you have to take care two center frequencies so if you have only passive elements so your maybe a quad stub or a single stub it need to have multiple stubs to over or to take the effect of multiple cut center frequencies and if you have active device like varactors on the on those then you can add those small small tabs like like a switching conditions to have multiple on off modes and then you can have reconfigurable filters so that is basically the term but again your question is very good Uh, it may be a very good research topic when we are more exploring that things okay okay sir uh, then the next question is while doing simulation in cst what hmm. should be the in inference made from current distribution at the center frequency of the design filter okay center frequency of the design filter current uh, okay okay uh, if you are designing it in a parallel coupled filter you have to check whether your current distribution phase are along the lambda by 4 line suitably placed plus there is another thing you have to check 
that is for a parallel coupled line you have electric field lines and rotated magnetic field lines among between them so at least you have to take care this hybrid field lines so when we are doing designing i we are doing designing in hfss not in cst so i am looking for each lambda by 4 sections whether the current and the phase of the currents means at least there should not be minima in the current orientations so it means that the whole lambda by 4 line all the current directions are in the one direction it may happen that if you designing it in a wrong way that your current null may occur in the lambda by 4 lines okay sir uh, next one is what is the meaning of emittance whether it will make any filter response issue yes yes emittance is actually does not belongs to the impede, imp, uh, filter you are you should go to the circuit theory basics in the circuit theory a very common effect is to have a balance load when you are designing transistor or mosfet kind of circuit sometimes we need impedance inverter so that impedance inverter or that admittance inverter is summarized to emittance so that is basically emitting i we can say emitting the behavior of one load to another load okay sir okay uh, the next question is whether dgs minimize the size of the filter if so how? no 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 dgs does not minimize the, the size of the filter dgs will provides you a effects on the overall filter response now i can say one effect it can happen that the introducing a dgs in a proper way at least reduces your overall single element filter length and that single element filter length at least provides you a better effect in compactness but if you can see my slide of that i am going there again it is basically yes this is basically dgs structure you can see it does not provides you a size reduction it provides you a harmonic suppression that is why i mentioned here that this light this light and other this lights they are concentrating that introductions of certain perturbations over harmonics but they are not concentrating anything on compactness okay sir okay uh, next one is for real time application which different frequency bands are used to design filters as per ieee standard or ieee okay. band okay i am just showing you the first slide then it will be very easy to an, uh, understand 802.1 on abgn this is basically the ieee standard and very common frequencies are 2.4 or 2.5 gigahertz and 5 gig so whatever the filter i have shown you here they are 2.5 gigahertz okay okay sir uh, next one is for design purpose of filters uh, difference between narrow band and wide band mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh that is the question means for design purpose for of filters what is the difference between narrow band for and wide band design purpose for filters oh difference between narrow band and wide band okay 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 see uh suppose you have a pass band of 1 uh, 10 megahertz it means what within that 10 megahertz if your if your input signal is a pulse a pulse means simultaneous conjugations of many sinusoidal signals and each sinusoidal signals having one sync function one unit unit impulse function so within that 10 megahertz if your signal uh, units impulse functions having A one, B one, C one, D one. If different different frequencies are there, they are moving to that ten megahertz. But if it happens that if you have filters in a hundred megahertz, then 
other than that a1 b1 c1 d1 it may happen that there is an x1 signal of sinusoidal over that initial sinusoidal signal and it provides you a bad shape of the pulse which is called as noise maybe and that noise maybe a phase noise provides you a bit bad implications of extra components added and when you are passing those extra component the primary objective of that narrow filter passband is it should restrict only the it should only pass the small frequency band and restrict all the other frequency bands so if your filters is for narrow band and you are designing for a wide band so it may happen your around the signal noise may also go so that's why the narrow band and wide band filter is purely dependent on your choice how many filter signal component you want to pass without any phase distortion okay sir okay uh, the next first question how to assume or optimize the resonator size of or srr for particular one frequency it is very easy you have already seen the design of the lambda so ultimately you first design the lambda and then uh, you calculate the lambda and then from that uh, using the lambda you calculate the initial values of the uh, transmission length and with the transmission length we have already seen how to calculate the j inverter you design the j inverters from that j inverters you straight away get the microstrip line values uh, in terms of the width and height and the uh, length and that width length you have obtaining a single unit cell transmission line now the problem is this is an unit cell value so as per your design of the lambda c it is very easy to design and it is very easy to get you the right design but whenever you coupled it in a third order or fourth order you are adding an extra capacitances due to the gaps so finally you have to tune it so that tuning is done purely by basis of optimization you can use a cost function and that cost function minimization may be the basic way of designing a optimization of the single resonator size okay sir thank you uh, the next question when we design integrated antenna with a microstrip filter for millimeter wave application how do we take the gaps between the conductor for parallel coupled filter and how do we decide the slot position with filter design okay i am seeing the question i am repeating the question how okay, do sir. we take gaps okay which gaps i maybe i don't know how do we take gaps between the conductors for the parallel coupled okay okay see uh, yes for a integration of filter with antenna basically we have to design the we have to take care the gaps because now here we are connecting with the 50 ohm lines but finally we have to design we have to connect there the antenna so the gaps between the line is very important and one most important thing is it is a leaky wave structure so that gap may produce certain effects due to the fringing field in the antenna effect so the effects of the uh, what i can say the gap between the conductors has to be designed and we generally design whatever the design we have done purely by the optimization process means uh, check the characteristics of the s11 and s21 you have a specifications and vary the value and you see the effects like that okay sir okay uh, the next question is can you give me an idea about electromagnetic band gap okay that is basically the out of the scope here electromagnetic band gap i can at, at least make a story to you uh, it's like if you have certain what i can say okay if you have a certain kind of periodic structures and that periodic structures provides you certain periodicity in nature and that periodicity in nature like our crystal lattice in Uh, device they have certain properties of signal to pass through that and that signal may if we say is an light or if you say it is electromagnetic 
then that electromagnetic signal it can pass through thin that any band gap structure contains a periodicity the signal may have certain pass band and may have certain stop band so whether the band gap is basically from the device level or from the natural or from the design level it is the same criteria okay sir uh next question is how can we design photonic field uh, how can we design photonic field yes photonic filter is nowadays very uh, good design topics first of all you have to choose the substrate that is the most important thing because uh, most important part of this uh, technology from microwave to millimeter wave is we are using isotropic substrate moment you are going for the photonic design you have to choose an anisotropic substrate second you have designing photonic range so your usable bandwidth should be very high or the band pass filter okay sir okay this design says that for a image rejection filter i have seen image rejection kind of filter you need at least the short roll off is 2% air pin line still 10% at least 5% can be possible if you are going for a open loop resonator it will give you at least 1 to 2% bandwidth but parallel coupled line is always initial starting point again air pin line contains a better options of coupling see they are couplings are strongly coupled side by side so the asymmetric effect in the pass band also reduced okay sir okay uh, next question is may we use lambda by 8 or lambda by 16 length lambda by 8 line lengths are i have already mentioned lambda by 8 line length are got transformation that is from uh, uh, lump to distributed but again the lambda by 8 lines are ultimately modified by the kurodas identity so initially whatever the length lambda by 8 provides you is for l to c or c to l and that is very useful for your low pass or high pass design you don't have l or c identity they are having l c or c l either parallel tank circuit or series tank circuit so moment you are having resonator that resonator needs a impedance transformer and you know already from the transmission line length lambda by 8 provides you one kind of setup lambda by 2 is 1 by 1 transformer lambda by 4 is quad array transformer we use lambda by 